All right, we will call this public meeting to order for Thursday, July 22nd of 2021. We'll begin our public meeting with a land acknowledgement. Missoula County acknowledges that this event takes place on the ancestral homeland of the Salish and Kalispell people. With that, would you join me in the pledge? Pledge to the flag of the United States of America, to the public for which it stands, one nation, under God, liberty and justice for all. Do we have any public announcements? Well, I have one on this list right here that uh, the Cartage Road and LW Commons final rezone hearings will be moved to August 26th uh, right here in this public meeting room. Do we have any public comment on items not on the agenda? You're welcome to comment. Please do just man, make sure you turn the mic on and introduce yourself. Okay. Um, my name is Susan Renault, and I am here because I do a lot of work with veterans of all stripes. And um, the American Legion in 1927 spent thousands of dollars to erect the Doughboy statue. And when I was down here paying taxes the other day, I noticed that there were a string of tent-like structures strung around the Doughboy statue in a very um, disrespectful way. I was really quite appalled by it. And then I noticed that there was food and water being distributed to the people who live on the grass. And while I watched, there was a gentleman who I could not possibly identify, but I know he dropped his pants and then began to urinate. And when I went in to pay my taxes for my vehicle, I was informed by the lady that was collecting my taxes because I asked her, I said, is this a common occurrence? Do you, do you, the, you people that work at the courthouse often see this happen? And she said, yes. I find that unacceptable behavior. I don't think that our tourists and um, any person should have to see that kind of behavior. And I also do not think it's respectful of the Doughboy statue that represents the men that died in World War II and World War I to have tent-like structures strung from them. And if there is to be that kind of distribution of free fruit and water, and I understand from the groundskeepers there is no permit for it. I don't know why. To me, that's a health issue. Um, it should be over by the gazebo away from the noble <clears throat> statue. And um, I would respectfully ask that, and I, I understand it, it's kind of a gray area as to who's in charge of what on the courthouse grounds. I, I understand that. And I found that out when I reported the incident to the police. They said, no, you need to talk to the sheriff. And the sheriff said, no, you need to talk to the police. So I kept going back and forth. But I really respectfully hope that you as the county commissioners will appreciate the fact that um, our veterans died for our freedom. And I think the Doughboy statue needs to be respected. And I think that we need to find another place for those tent like things to be strung. And that's why I'm here. Thanks. Thanks a lot, Susan. So uh, I, from one of my offices, I get to look at the courthouse lawn all the time, and we really recognize that uh, there's sometimes there's behavior on the courthouse lawn that we, we don't want. This isn't, and just hang on just a moment. Okay, this, this isn't anything new, and we have begun some, hopefully some improvements that will help with that, but I do want to add, add something to what you said just for clarity's sake. So it isn't the county distributing food. 
nor is it the city. It's a private church group and they didn't put tents hanging off the statue. They were on the sidewalk. And if you do see someone behaving in a way that is breaking the law on the lawn, call 911. And it is actually the police's jurisdiction. And uh, I know because I have called 911 and reached the police to deal with behavior on the courthouse lawn that isn't right. And they they will come. Well, I did that and they... (laughs) I got the runaround, but I did finally get a a police report filed. I did learn, though, from the sheriff's department that the county uh, jail is only 50 percent full because of restrictions related to the worry about um, the virus, which I would, as a taxpayer, urge you to fully open the jail so that some of these people can be arrested. I really do. I mean, they should not be living on our courthouse lawn, and they are living on our courthouse lawn. So also, no one is living on our courthouse lawn. There's no, there's no structures there. There's no, no sleeping they're, there overnight. They yeah. hang out there during the day. But Every just time to, I'm there. I don't want to parse words, but no one's living on the courthouse lawn. Okay. So, thanks. All right. Uh, I want to let you know about our current claims. Claims received of as June as of June 23, 2021 to July 5th, 2021 by the commissioner's office total $5,652,454.30. We have one, two, three, four, five hearings today. The first one is on our justice, equity, diversion, diversity and inclusion resolution and our own Jamal Galbraith will present. Good afternoon, commissioners. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Can you hear me okay? Thanks. So. Um, well, good afternoon again. My name is Jamar Galbraith. I use he, him pronouns, and I'm the equity coordinator with Missoula County. Um, and I would like to put before uh, the Board of County Commissioners a resolution um, to um, uh, establishing Missoula County's commitment to a just, equitable, diverse, and inclusive Missoula County. Um, and this is an opportunity for us. Uh, this resolution puts our commitment uh, to justice, equity, diversity, and inclusion. Um, Jedi, I utilize Jedi often um, because it's um, one, I'm a huge nerd, um, and I think that it's a really good opportunity for us to uh, be able to think critically and engage um, justice, equity, diversity, and inclusion in a way that really reflects Missoula County. Um, this resolution this resolution articulates the need to align well within local government um, and develop comprehensive strategies to address multi-layered intersectional um, strategies for justice, equity, diversity, and inclusion. Um, I'd like to mention that this is, you know, one step in a series of, of steps that are uh, that are happening within our within our community um, and it's not any attempts to override any pre-existing work or anything like that it's really just an opportunity for us uh, to think critically about justice equity diversity inclusion um, and develop comprehensive strategies to uh, to address it uh, my request today is for the board of county commissioners to open public comment um, uh, to open a public comment period uh, to end um, August 5th, uh, which will give us time to engage uh, the, the community, get community feedback on this draft of resolution. Um, and I ask that we uh, close that period on August 5th uh, to give us time to uh, work any corrections, work that public comment and to, um, into the resolution before the August 12th um, public meeting. Um, and so I, I also mentioned that there is a mirroring of uh, resolution that is being developed by the city of Missoula um, that um, I have uh, some uh, partners from the city, um, Ashley Wells and I think they'll might be online here, um, but I've got a few partners from the city that I would like to uh, speak to sort of the the mirroring um, application of this. Thanks, Mark. You're welcome. Where could people read this resolution so they make it? Um, that's a good question. I'm pretty new at my job here, I think. Um, so uh, the resolution um, is within the, um, it's drafted with the Board of uh, County Commissioners. Um, I, there, I thought that it, it was submitted as an agenda item, uh, as part of the agenda items uh, for, for today's session um, as well. Um, and we can receive public comments through the public comment uh, channels by email at bcc at missoulacounty.us. And you can also feel free to contact uh, your commissioners or myself um, with any questions regarding the resolution. Uh, my uh, email address is jgalbreath, G A L 
B-R-E-A-T-H, at missoulacounty.us. You're welcome. Um, and I'd like to, am I, am I able to welcome up uh, Ashley and, and Dale, who is joining us uh, online to sort of speak through the alignment from the city's perspective? Absolutely. I want to make sure that Violet can get info on other contacts. Yes. Reach us about them. Absolutely. Right. I was just going to say that you can find the resolution in the agenda packet um, for today uh, on the commissioner's meeting minutes and agenda portal. Great, thank you. Hello, I'm Ashley Brittner Wells. I work for the city of Missoula. Um, Dale is also on um, the team's call, and I think he's going to primarily be presenting, but I just wanted to kind of tee him up. We are uh, part of a National League of Cities cohort uh, for Cities of Opportunity with 10 other cities uh, throughout the United States, and that's kind of the uh, process whereby this resolution came about, and so I'll let Dale kind of speak to some of that work and then some of the parallel resolution work that we are going to be presenting next week to our city council. Thank you. Dale, have anything? Dale. Uh, hello, commissioners. Am I uh, am I up? You are. Thank you for having me. Well, uh, thank you, Jamar and Ashley. I I, I wanted to uh, talk a little bit about the partnership uh, that we've developed among some of the agencies in Missoula. So uh, Ashley uh, talked about uh, the the. National League of Cities and Towns Opportunity Equity Cohort that we're participating in, um, and the way the city the city of Missoula uh, was awarded a membership in this cohort, and we took the uh, and the um, strategy we took uh, to to do this was to really be community focused related to to that cohort, and we invited Missoula County, the University of Montana, uh, Missoula County Public Schools, um, and All Nations Health Center are all uh, core partners in this, and it's been a terrific partnership, um, and we are uh, developing um, um, community-minded goals, uh, but with uh, actions by our own resolutions, such as this uh, resolution that's before the county commissioners um, and the resolution that will go uh, before uh, city council is similar where we're, we are taking uh, actions in in equity um, and systemic racism and uh, we'll We'll, we'll put those in uh, actionable items that we will do as city government. Um, but I wanted to make sure that, you know, it's in the context of all of these other partners. So we are uh, uh, very hopeful that we're, we have a, a great, uh, that we will uh, address these issues uh, as a, an entire community. And it's been a really terrific process. Thanks a lot, Dale. So the, What's before us now is to keep this public hearing open until August 5th for anyone to comment on the resolution. Would anybody like to offer any public comment at this time? Hello, uh, my name is. Do you get the green, make sure the green's on and then just say, yes. okay, good, thank you. Yep. My name is Jason McDonald. I guess I moved here a few years ago, I was born here. Um, yeah, so the diversity, equity, inclusion stuff. I mean, we can think back to like the phase 1B program for the vaccine distribution. And it was like a middle aged man like myself with asthma was not allowed to get the vaccine. And a young kid was because the color of our skin was different. These policies are inevitably like trying to get quote unquote getting rid of systemic racism and and inequality and the policies themselves are geared towards race. So the policies themselves are racist. And I don't know how people just can't acknowledge how just terrible and cancerous this is. I mean, I, I could go on. I got examples going back to my days University of College, uh, Washington. Uh, I mean, I was an A plus student here in the welding program at Missoula College two years ago. And then this year I walked out because some activists decided that my project in the class was too offensive. And the head of the department told me I could not do it. And I told him that, you know, you have to protect the freedom of expression, free students. And if you don't, I'm leaving. And I did. And that was it. And I got straight F's last year. Um, yeah, this this stuff sucks. That's all I gotta say. It sucks. 
Any other public comment? All right, then we will keep this open until August 5th and jump on to our next hearing, which is the Manly Subdivision Covenant Amendments. Good afternoon, commissioners. Matt Heimel here with Community Planning Services. I'll be presenting the proposed amendments to the Manly Subdivision Covenants. Oh, that's I have a uh, PowerPoint here with the property location. Oh, the mouse. Sorry. OK, thanks for your patience. So this is a proposed um, amendment to the covenants for Manly subdivision. And Manly subdivision is a three lot minor subdivision located at the southwest corner of Waldo Road and Highway 93 South. We received a request to adjust the filed covenants. Um, that would correct the amendment section of the covenant so that items not under purview of the Board of County Commissioners may be amended without governing body review. So with subdivision review, uh, we see draft covenants and there are always a amendment section to the covenants. Uh, in, in this case, that amendment section wrapped in items that we typically see that are left to a homeowners association, for example, such as uh, land use and architectural controls that are not under the uh, purview of, of Missoula County. But in this case, it was uh, left as an item that would need governing body review. So the applicant is requesting to amend that section that you can see here so that land use and architectural control are removed. Uh, this is a request that gets reviewed for the plat adjustment section of the Missoula County subdivision regulations, which can also contemplate changes to covenants. And in our review, we found that other necessary aspects uh, uh, such as um, weed Wildlife, weed management and restoration plan, address signage, rose, driveway, uh, fire prevention, and the air st stagnation zone, water use and rights, radon and energy efficiency, all points that we look at during subdivision re review are not going to be uh, sufficient or significantly altered through this request. So staff is recommending approval of this request uh, subject to one condition of approval. And that condition of approval is that the fire suppression or fire uh, protection section be left unchanged. And that is, uh, staff is recommending that condition because the proposed changes to the fire section are not in uh, strict compliance with how it reads in the subdivision re regulations. And um, the covenant section, at, as they are now filed, were reviewed by the Missoula County Fire Inspector with the first sufficiency review for Manly uh, subdivision. So that was reviewed and approved with, with the subdivision. This request originally came to Missoula County just based solely on the um, amendment section and the problem that that posed for, for the for, for the applicant and, and the property owner. And so this, um, if approved, this should uh, ad address the, those concerns on that um, amendment section. So I can answer any questions that you have on this. I think uh, the applicant's representative is also with us today. So essentially this just cleans up the covenants so correct exactly yes we're we're cleaning up a part of the covenants that really is not under the purview of missoula county or, or the board of county commissioners i don't have any unless jamie so was the developer or develop or uh property owner here would like to say anything Hi, Josh, this is Jamie Erbacher at WGM Group. Um, my only comment would be our, our change to the fire prevention section is also fairly minor, and really it's just a f clarification. Matt, do you happen to have that section that you could pull up? Yeah, just a moment. Thank you. Uh, and really our change to that is clarifying that 
it's only the new dwellings that require fire sprinklers. Um, and that is stated in the first part of the sentence as all dwelling units are required to provide fire sprinklers. And then in the second part of that sentence, it says they're only required in each new home. So we're just clarifying that uh, really it's only for those new dwelling units that fire sprinklers are required. And then as you see on the screen, the other changes are minor changing shall to must, which essentially means the same thing um, and capitalizing subdivision. So we just ask that the commissioners um, recognize that clarification and support our request and um, not the uh, proposed condition by staff to um, not change the fire prevention section. I'm sorry, say that you, you don't want the changes. We we want the changes as proposed on the screen and staff has a condition proposed to you that would not make these changes. Staff discuss. <laughs> <laughs> so the um, recommendation from staff is to approve the covenant amendment request with a condition of approval that the fire prevention section be left unchanged. So all the other proposed aspects that are in, in your packet, including the changes to the amendments that, that I just shown uh, could be approved. And then per the recommended condition of approval, the strike through text and underline text on the screen here would just be left unchanged back to the original version. So there would be no changes to the fire prevention section. So what's the substantive difference between staff version and uh, the developer's version in terms of fire protection? In terms of fire suppression, we would still see fire sprinklers required to be in, installed. The language in the covenants, however, would be inconsistent with other covenants that we see recorded for subdivisions in Missoula County relative to the requirement for fire sprinklers. What's the nature of the inconsistency? Uh, the Wording for new, new dwellings, shall or must. Pretty much those. Just the, the differences in shalls and musts. Shalls and musts and the differences in new, new dwellings. Maybe I'm not tracking. Jamie, can, can you explain then your position? Sure. Uh, Missoula County has only required spring, fire sprinklers in new dwellings. And so our proposed uh, modification as shown on the screen clarifies that. Um, if you read the third line in that section, it says, um, Sorry. let me see, uh, um, as applicable, is required in each new home for the purpose of fire protection. And so, you know, we're just clarifying that really this, the sprinklers are only required in new homes and they don't have to be retrofitted into an existing dwelling unit. There is one existing dwelling unit on this property or within the subdivision. And so just want to clarify that that does not need to be retrofitted with sprinklers. Um, shall and must if Matt is firm on that, certainly I'm fine um, referring back to the original language and going with shalls rather than must. Um, in my opinion, though, they do mean the same thing. We did have these covenants reviewed by an attorney, whereas previously I don't believe that they had been. Um, and so in her opinion, shall and must also meant the same thing. So Matt, if if uh, <coughs> the language, re language around fire suppression remains the same as you are suggesting, could it be interpreted that someone would need to retrofit an existing structure with sprinklers? Uh, no, we, we would not require a retrofitting of, of a building with for sprinklers. Okay, so then it's Jamie just her language is just clarifying that. Is that correct. Kind of it out. Is that right, Jamie? Yes, that's correct. Does that cause staff heartburn? Yeah, good question. <laughs> I wouldn't say it causes me heartburn. It's it's simply a matter of consistency with what we see adopted across what, the board. All the other okay. covenants. Okay. We would still see requirements for sprinklers in new dwellings in Manly subdivision. Yes, I agree. And that's why we clarified and added the word new in front of dwellings. Okay, but adding the word new in front of dwellings is different than other covenants, is what you're saying, Matt? To my knowledge, yes. 
Is that a problem, John? John. <laughs> in here. Well, I understand CAPS's position that you want to have consistency from subdivision to subdivision. So if, I mean, and, and it seems like there isn't really any substance here. So that's what it feels um, like. I, I, I don't, I think we could keep it at um, all dwellings because okay. it's clear that there isn't going to be a requirement for retrofitting. Okay. And then that maintains the consistency with past subdivisions. Thank you. Can you live with that, Jamie? Yeah, I, I mean, I don't think it's a deal killer. It was just a clarification because the second part of that sentence had said new home, so. <laughs> okay, thank you. Do we have any public comment on this? Hi, I'm Ryan Fry. I'm the future developer of this, but I did not bring this petition forward or work with G WGM on it. Um, it's the current homeowner who set up these covenants in the beginning. Um, she is asking for this change as well. Um, and I just comment that the, uh, the covenants as written would not allow us to conform with the master plan density that the county is proposing in that, that row along Highway 93. So the architectural dwelling requirement is for a single family unit in there. And um, so we're asking that that be dropped as well, which is part of this proposal, if I'm correct, Matt. Um, and um, for that reason, so we can get the live work units and the proposed construction going in there. So. Matt, could you speak to that? Commissioners, there, there are uh, restrictions within the existing covenants. Um, however, for any current land use review, we would look to our land use re resolution, which would look at subdivision conditions or zoning. So in short, um, existing terms in the covenants for land use controls, architectural controls are not enforced by Missoula County. They, they would be a, a private matter that could cause issues within this subdivision between pr private property owners. So to my understanding, that's why we're, we're seeing this re request. And it's a um, it's an aspect that right now is requiring governing body review for, for any amendments, but the substance within the, those sections is not even uh, an, um, enforceable by Missoula County, as I said. So, right, if you're okay, can I just ask you a question with this? So hearing that, do you feel like this still makes it not possible for you to do live work? Uh, I think if, uh, if this was approved, it would just make it a cleaner process. I mean, I feel like the homeowner is asking for changes to um covenants that that were created when she subdivided her lot and so it's really it's still her asking for those changes she just didn't from my understanding um review the covenants and the subdivision rules i guess if that makes sense um basically so i think it would make cle it cleaner on our end um knowing that there's no covenants enforceable or not to hold us up or create sticking points with anybody. Um, and I will also comment that the fire suppression was part of our um, zoning change requirements as well. So it's kind of, we're doubling up on it already. So, yeah. <clears throat> Thanks. So if we, move, if we approve this recommended motion, who has heartburn? Jamie's saying not a deal killer. If I, that was a quote. I want to make sure I got it. <laughs> That's correct, Josh. Not a deal killer. And so basically what this does is allows Ryan to move forward with his development um, or any use that is allowed per the zoning regulations and doesn't restrict them to one single family residence on the property. That's good to me. Is there any other comment out there? Any other comment? Sounds like we may have a motion. So. Coming, motion coming. I can't see, so um, I'm going to move that the request to adjust the filed covenants, conditions, and restrictions for Manly subdivision be approved based on findings of fact in the staff report and subject to the recommended conditions of approval. All right, all in favor. Aye. All right. Thanks a lot, Matt. Thanks, Jamie. Thanks, Mr. Thanks, Ryan. Ryan.
All right, next up is uh, Buildings for Lease or Rent, Three Needles Lane. Uh, Bailey is attached to this, but I don't believe Bailey's here. Sorry, Commissioner. Matt, uh, Matt Mamel again. I'll, I'll fill in for uh, Bailey Minnick today on this Buildings for Lease or Rent item. So first, a little bit of um, background. This project falls under Buildings for Lease or Rent review, which Missoula County has had regulations on since around 2013. That came after a legislative change that replaced a process called subdivision for, for lease or rent. And the idea behind this is that it is a review process looking at impacts and um, adequate services for development that creates units that can be occupied or used with a rental agreement or a some kind of lease contract but not necessarily through a, a method of, of ownership. So like storage units, apartments, office space, um, multi-dwelling buildings, it occurs on uh, unzoned lands. Zoned lands are um, exempt from this re review because they're covered under the zoning re regulations. Uh, typically, we've seen these projects come forward as stor storage unit complexes or a collection of uh, smaller multi-dwelling units. Uh, this, what you'll see today, is one of the larger projects. So I'll go ahead and share my screen where we can see the uh, property location. Strange technical difficulty on my end. There we go. OK, so this project is the Laurent Commercial Park Phase 2 Buildings for Lease or Rent. And as I said, falling under Building for Lease or Rent Review, where the um, property is located at 6163 Three Needles Lane in, in Lolo. The applicant is uh, Lolo Creek Properties LLC, presented by Missoula Engineering Incorporated. So this is a proposal from Lolo Creek LLC and Zapata Homes Incorporated. Uh, to build 71 residential units in 11 buildings. So the development is on a 5.76 acre currently undeveloped vacant parcel. Uh, it's out, uh, it's on zone outside of FEMA map floodplain and access from Ridgeway and Three Needles Lane off Highway 93 South. The so Ridgeway is on the north end of the site plan, plan crossing a currently develop property and Highway 93 is on the right hand side of the site plan. The proposed buildings include development of uh, five sixplex multifamily structures, one eightplex multifamily structure, one 32plex multifamily structure, and one live works structure. So again, uh, 71 units across 11 buildings. There will be uh, 10 garage parking spaces um, within two of those buildings. Additionally, there's an existing commercial workshop uh, located on the property. There will be 118 new parking stalls in addition to the 10 garage spaces. There will be accessible sidewalks proposed uh, adjacent to parking areas for access to each of the buildings from those parking spaces. And the proposed development is adjacent to another building for lease or rent project that was approved in 2018, and that is just north or um, to the above the uh, area on, on the site plan. And that prior development uh, was the first phase of this project with 38 units within seven multifamily structures, and that's currently built out. So this would be a continuation to, to the south. All proposed buildings will be connected to the Lola Water and Sewer District, RSAD 901. Uh, main extensions for water and sewer would be required and have been reviewed by the Department of Environmental Quality. Uh, regarding emergency services to this area, that will be served by Missoula Rural Fire and the Missoula County Sheriff's Office. And access to the site, as I said, is off of two existing approaches, one paved off Ridgeway, and the second access is unpaved and shown on the right-hand side of the screen, to Highway 93. Uh, that would need a uh, review, I think a re-review by the Montana Department of Transportation for that access. So they would redesign and, and pave that. And that, that would actually be the primary access to, to this site with that alternative access to the north. 
and internal roads and parking areas would also be paved. So in building for lease or rent review, and as detailed in the staff report, there are points, uh, findings of fact, and conclusions of law relative to the re review criteria. So I'll summarize the um, criteria that those will fall under. And if you'd like me to touch on points, please just let me know. So that um, criteria, we look at um, physical environment impacts. We look at general compliance with overall regulations. We look at impacts to human population, growth policy compliance. And I don't think I said it earlier, but this is within um, the Lolo Regional Plan land use. It's designated as light industrial and commercial for the 2002 Lolo Regional Plan. Uh, we also review whether there are adequate uh, services being um, adequate water, wastewater, and solid waste facilities, adequate access, adequate medical, fire protection, and law enforcement services, uh, compliance with floodplain regulations, which this has no issue with. And staff is recommending approval of this project subject to 13 conditions of approval. And I'll just summarize the, those uh, conditions here. So first is a well, first two are for land use permits and building permit submittals to be reviewed by the appropriate county agencies, and those permits must substantially comply with what's reviewed here today. Uh, a road maintenance agreement needs to be re recorded for Three Needles Lane. That should also be reviewed by CAPS and Missoula Rural Fire District. Um, fourth condition is all drive aisles and parking areas within the development need to be paved a minimum of 20 feet wide for emergency access. Uh, the fifth condition of approval is relative to some slopes on the left hand side of the development There's a requirement for a geotechnical analysis to be completed prior to any permits being issued for three of the six flex buildings located on that west side of the site. Uh, sixth condition is a requirement for a grading and drainage plan to be reviewed and approved uh, by county public works in accordance with the public works manual. Seventh condition is for a landscaping plan. Uh, eighth condition is for a weed management plan for the property. A ninth condition, as I stated earlier, is for Montana Department of Transportation to review and finalize uh, plans or re review finalized plans, excuse me, for that access onto Highway 93. Uh, so the last four conditions, conditions 10 through 13, have to do with fire suppression. Condition 10 requires residential fire sprinklers in, in each new structure and plans for the sprinklers need to be reviewed and approved by Missoula Rural Fire District prior to approval of a land use permit. Uh, a fire hydrant placement plan also needs to be reviewed and approved by Missoula Rural Fire District. There is a 12th condition requiring um, standard language that we see for adequate road width for emergency vehicle firefighting apparatus to access the site. So making sure that those have um, ad adequate uh, width and radius for access. And the 13th condition of approval requires access roads to extend within 150 feet of all portions of uh, the exterior walls of the first story of, of buildings, unless an exemption is approved by Missoula Rural Fire District. And that is really relative to the building you can see on the lower left hand corner or the southwest portion of the site and that I believe is over 150 feet away. So um, that should be covered for fire uh, protection either with a required access way or with uh, fire sprinklers. So that summarizes the uh, key points, the conditions of approval. If you have questions, I'm happy to dig through the findings to address those. Um, I think also the applicant should be on the call with us today. Okay. Do you have any questions? No. I just had one. When you mentioned the slope and the geotech piece that Public Works would do, can you describe that a bit more or what, what you're after? Public Works doing it? I thought it was just a, a firm needed to be hired. I thought Public Works was doing the, the northern they or mess, just I drainage. Mess that up. Well, Public Works is in the drainage, right? Correct. So uh, Missoula County Public Works needs to review the grading and drainage plan. Okay, was the, the slope and the geotech was the piece I was not quite sure what, what was going on there. So a geotechnical analysis, I believe is really to ensure um, safety and slopes stability prior to structures going on that that uh, western okay. part of, of the property that needs to be prepared 
uh, by the applicant prior, prior to any permits being issued. Because of the slope is so steep. Correct. Great, thanks. The, yeah, the developer or the Mr. Sage is here. Oh, Sage. Good afternoon, commissioners. Um, I'd just like to thank Bailey for her work on this project at CAPS. I know it's a larger building for lease or rent application. Um, we've worked with, I think, everybody at CAPS on this, so it's been really good effort with everybody. Um, I would like to comment on the geotechnical report. Uh, we did we did have Lorenzen Soil Mechanics prepared a geotechnical report for the site back in, I believe, 2017. Um, he found that the soil conditions were suitable for structures. There were no stability issues or concerns. The slopes are predominantly sands and gravels. There's some hard rock underlying a lot of this. So um, we, we already have the geotechnical report prepared. Okay. Have no issue submitting it. Uh, with this up with the building permitting um, do, you, do you have any other issues with the uh, 13 conditions no we we agree to all the conditions um, right. they're all reasonable and uh, had intended to provide that that information nice so, wonderful so if you have any questions i'm happy to i don't see it. are there other is there other public comment <laughs> yeah any other public comment on this thank you mr sage so uh, this was a this is a, a a large development in the buildings for lease or rent, and so thanks to Bailey and for you, Matt and Mr. Sage and everybody. It's a big project. Well, Matt, what's the, what's the, like a one sentence definition of buildings for lease or rent project? To the best I can, I tend to speak in rambling paragraphs. But, <laughs> uh, buildings for lease or rent provides for the review of uh, development that provides leasable or rentable uh, property property it's okay. on unzoned land right it is on un unzoned land um there was a question on monday about conduit and i can provide some yeah if you'd like so building police rent does not provide a method of ownership however um there was a question during the bcc caps uh, update on monday as to whether these could be conduit in the future uh so while the review of the this project does not provide those condo units. It would be possible in the future if the applicant chose to uh, do a condo declaration. That would be through a either subdivision for a possibly one lot one lot subdivision and zoning to be eligible for a condominium declaration, or a subdivision proposal that has a what we call a contemplation of condominium units, and there are provisions in the subdivision regulations for that. Just to clarify from a okay, question. Thanks. Monday. Thank you so much for that. Um, I'm going to move that the board uh, approve buildings for lease or rent project at 6163 Three Needles Lane based on the findings of fact and conditions of law subject to the recommended conditions of approval found in the staff report. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. All right, uh, next up is the uh, Georgiana edition plat adjustment and Nick is on deck. Thank you, commissioners. Uh, today I will be discussing the Georgian edition flat adjustment. This is a request to remove the 50 foot sanitary drain field restrictions on lots two, two through four of the Georgian edition subdivision. Start with project background here, some context. So we are, uh, the location of this project is in the upper rattlesnake at the intersection of Georgiana Drive and Elk Ridge Court. This subdivision is a five lot subdivision that was uh, platted on October 6, 1976. Current zoning is CRR1. 
the time of subdivision approval, there was a gravel pit that was active on the property on the western edge bordering lots two through four. That is where the restriction came from uh, for the for drain fields. Uh, and this was due to worry about the uh, down gradient slope with the gravel pit being there. Uh, the gravel pit has since been reclaimed and is no longer active and no longer poses a threat to potential drain fields. Project was sent out for HD comment to both Missoula County agencies as well as the city of Missoula since it is bordered by city land. Um, the only comment received was from the health department, which commented that this uh, project um, approving this adjustment would not violate any health department rules and health has no objections. There's also a notice posted in the Missoulian on July 4th and July 11th, and we received no comments uh, from that posted notice. With uh, any proposed adjustments, file plats, or, re or re related documents, um, we use the review criteria and 6.7.4 of the Missoula County subregs. Uh, you can see those review criteria points here, screen. Based off those review criteria points, I'll go over a few of the more relevant staff findings. Uh, so the request was found to be minor in nature. Uh, as previously stated, the gravel pit uh, is no longer in operation and has not been since 1977-78 era, and it has since been reclaimed. Um, that is now part of city open space and parkland uh, in the, it'd be the um, Lincoln Hills Mount Jumbo area. Uh, the re removal of the 50 foot sanitary drain field restriction on lots two through four will not create any new impacts or mitigate any impact on the neighboring land. And last, the proposal is cons consistent with health department standards and is supported by the S Missoula City County Health Department. So uh, based off findings of fact and staff report, staff is recommending approval of the proposed plat adjustment with two recommended conditions. The first condition is that a licensed surveyor uh, would need to prepare an exhibit or affidavit showing the removal of the drain field restriction. And condition number two would give the applicant 60 calendar days uh, to submit all the record all the required um, recording documents to fulfill the plat adjustment request. And that's all I have today, and I can take questions. Thank you. <clears throat> I have no questions. Do we have any public comment on this? Uh, Tom Anderson with Eli and Associates uh, representing the uh, people who made the request. If you have any questions, I'm here too. Okay. They did a great job. There's not much going on here. <laughs> yeah, it seems, seems like there was in 1977 and 78, but the gravel pit is long gone and remediated and this 50 foot buffer no longer needs to be there. Correct. Yeah. I think they were concerned that the gravel pit would get too close to the property line and it never did and it's not going to. So we'll Great. still have the 10 foot setback from the health code regulations. Um, and obviously any drain fields that are put there will be done for DEQ and middle right. county standards. So, yeah, thank you. Thank you. We get the thumbs up from the health department. So, I'm going to move that the request to adjust the Georgiana. How do you pronounce that? I'm probably not the best one to answer that, but I've been going with Georgiana. 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 <laughs> Addition plat be approved based on the findings of fact in the staff report and subject to the recommended conditions of approval. All right. All in favor? Hey. Aye. Thank you. Thanks, Tom. Thanks. All right, next up, the uh, Pontiac Commercial Subdivision. Tim Worley will present. A major subdivision. Good. All right, commissioners, this is uh, Pontiac Commercial Development, a uh, major subdivision coming from Matt Wetzel, represented by IMAG Corp. The property is roughly 20 acres and accessed via Roller Coaster Road. 
Again, uh, eight lots are proposed with a 3.83 acre common area along the western edge of the property. A similar layout was approved in 2008, but this was never filed. And the site has been graded out. And I think this was in about 2006. That was prior to that original subdivision review. The zoning is CI1, light industry. And if we take a look at the growth policy, this is an area in the 2019 uh, land use element recommended for residential uses at a density range from three to 11 dwelling units per acre. And that's in that yellow color. If you move to the north of the railroad tracks, you can see industrial center and moving down Highway 10 toward the airport as well. So the growth policy is certainly residential and um, essentially this property is currently on a light industrial residential zoning boundary, if you will. Um, there was a rezoning dating back to 2008 that removed a small area of residential zoning along the southern edge of the property. And you can see that in the zoning maps, actually. Let's see if we can go back here. That strip on the properties to the east was essentially removed on this property. So this subdivision is not compliant with the growth policy, but it has had industrial zoning for some time. And planning board in their review of the subdivision recognized the need for housing, of course, but also acknowledged the need for commercial and industrial land within the greater urban area. So CI1 light industry includes, as you might expect, industrial uses, um, industrial and commercial mini warehouse, as well as repair services. Roller Coaster Road is the county road that provides access to this uh, property. It's a gravel road. What's being proposed to access the eight lots is Grand Am Way, which is proposed at a 26 foot width. It will be a private road and privately maintained. There is a paved road standard in the regulations that would require curb and gutter to be attached to this road. Um, the applicant requests a variance from this standard and staff is in support of the variance due, due to the fact that this would be a unique um, drainage feature in this area, especially considering that roller coaster remains a gravel road immediately to the north. This is the proposed road section, road section and as you can see, there is no curb and gutter proposed. What's instead proposed is uh, roadside swales. So non-motorized facilities are also required along major subdivisions. And in this case, a five foot um, facility is required with a seven foot boulevard. What's being proposed in place of that is a four foot wide contiguous path with a uh, physical separation indicated in all likelihood by a reflector system. So again, basically this amounts to like a four foot extension of that 26 feet of road pavement with reflectors delineating between the walking space and the driving space. Staff is recommending denial of this variance due to the fact that the seven foot boulevard would provide separation between trucks and pedestrians. And the health department also noted that the boulevard would help with snow storage. So the required walkway again would be a five foot wide facility separated from the road by a seven foot, essentially a swale. There is a 3.83 acre riparian or common area along the western edge of the property, which contains a riparian resource area as well as an adjacent buffer. And if we tilt this plat to the right, you can see probably a better depiction of that area of riparian resource, much of which actually is on the neighboring property to the west. These draws within this area are key habitat for sensitive bird species, which have been studied for years. And so there's really good longitudinal data about these bird species. And the goal obviously is to minimize the impact on these grassy areas, these drainage areas and preserve the resource and preserve the species, which includes Swainson's hawks and long-eared owls. So we do have some recommendations to clarify that 
the riparian area and the buffer are no build areas. To expand the buffer to the edge of Grand M Way on the north end of the property and to the berm on the southern end of the property. To expand some buffer restrictions and to add some best practices for um, protecting riparian areas. Fire protection will be in the form of a 30,000 gallon buried cistern adjacent to Grand Am Way. And automatic fire sprinklers may be required based on occupancy, scale of the buildings, et cetera. It's kind of a lot by lot requirement in this case. We do uh, recommend some language changes for fire protection, but the essence uh, meets the regulations of what's been submitted. We did receive one public comment. Um, it was concern about drainage from this commercial development, considering its proximity to Laval Creek and the Grass Valley French Ditch. The recommendation was to keep lot eight as a no build zone and to keep vehicles out of the bird gully. I thought I'd just provide some context of where we are here. This is the roughly 20 acre property with the draw. It's hard on a topo map to actually see the draw. It doesn't really show up very well. But here's Grass Valley French Ditch at the base of the, the bluff, kind of the clay terrace in that area of the valley. And here's Laval Creek here. Of course, it, this is Laval Creek north of the interstate. But the two cross each other and Laval continues down here into kind of a low floodplain area. Continuing west. Planning board uh, did support the curb and gutter variance. I should note that there were five members present and they voted unanimously. Uh, they also recommended denial of the walkway variance. Planning board questioned the lack of growth policy and compliance, but understood the benefits of industrial and commercial uses within the urban area. They discussed the highest and best use for the property. They did request clarification of the riparian resource area, what our recommended amendments were. And then they clarified the issue of road maintenance, whether this was a public road. The findings do say that it, it's planned to be a public road. I should emphasize again that it's planned to be a private road. and private maintenance. Just a handful of pictures here showing what the property looks like. It's been occupied uh, for storage for a number of years. This is looking to the north and west. This is looking down into the area of riparian resource, much of which again is on the property to the west, but a portion of this is on this particular property. And this is the berm in question looking to the south southeast. Commissioners, there are your motions. Uh, again, staff is in support of subdivision. I'll be avail available if you have any questions that I believe Paul is going to present as well. Thanks a lot, Tim. Paul looks like he's eager to chat. Uh, Paul Forsting, IMEG Corporation. Uh, Tim was actually going to pull up my PowerPoint for me. And I'll grab a, a pointer from I'm I'm here today with Matt Wetzel, the property owner, and then his consultant, Scott Johnson, there in the back row. Um, Matt's going to say some words after I get done talking. Um, I have a PowerPoint. I'm just going to show some photos to add some context to what Tim has already mentioned. Um, and then in in summary of, of what I'm about to talk about, um, we're in support of, well, we appreciate the supportive staff report. We, um, uh, it, was, it was good to get the planning board's approval. We appreciate having the curb and gutter um, requirement uh, removed, at least as far as the recommendation goes from the planning office. And uh, our only issue, if, if you want to call it that, is we, we would like your um, consideration of our proposed walkway. And so I'm going to focus on that primarily for this today. Tim, is there something, is there a mouse I can, or you want to just run it for me? Um, I'd be happy to run it. Uh, as well, right? <laughs> okay. Thanks, Tim. I appreciate that. Uh, this is just a general overview here um, of the site. Tim, you could, you could probably click through this. You did a good job of um, explaining it. Here's a picture from the road to our site. 
Um, there's a couple more of these, Tim. Maybe you could just hit that. There's another one. You can. It, it does a good job of showing Roller Coaster Road. Maybe stop right there, Tim. Um, this is Roller Coaster Road as it leads up to our site. You can see our site. Um, I'm sorry, we're looking south. This is looking. Uh, Roller Coaster Road goes east and oh. west generally, and so this is looking west. Sorry, thanks. Yep, and then. Um, here I've highlighted four different photo areas I'm going to show you. Um, two are just east of us on Roller Coaster Road. Um, if you look look at the stars on there, you can see them on our exhibit. And then there's two north of um, me. I'm just going to show you some photos of it. It gives you a good context of what we're what the area has been used for. Tim, if you could, uh, this is um, this is uh, I believe this is uh, I was going to say shadow asphalt, but I can't remember if this is shadow or if this is this looks like what what Matt called the chop shop. But uh, <laughs> not exactly sure what a chop shop is. It sounds nefarious. Um, it's it's a, what they're doing out here is they're using the full site. They're filling it up with vehicles. They're fencing them off. These are a couple acre sites, and and there's for lack of better word, junk all all across them. Tim, uh, the next one here's here's shadow asphalt. Shadow asphalt um, has completely utilized their full site. They're east of us on Roller Coaster Road. They've got their equipment on there. Um, all those, these photos aren't great. They, they they do show what they're doing. And this is a lot. The reason I'm showing you these photos, this is a lot of what we expect to be on our site. These are the type of folks who are looking to buy our one or two acre tracks. Tim, to the next slide. Here's um, Inspiration Drive. This is to the north of our site. There's in the magnitude of 100 or, or so industrial commercial uh, properties using Inspiration Drive. Um, the next slide. To, um, Summit Drive. What I'm wanting to show you here, they're 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 not paved. They're they're used heavily by truck traffic. We don't see any sidewalks. We see people fencing off their full extent of their property, um, and so it's it's not it's not a commercial coffee shop type of area. It's really a industrial um, wrecking yard, large lot um, area. Tim, onto the to the next slide. Um, here's our layout. What all I wanted to point out here is we do have it is a private road that we're proposing. Our private road has a private gate um, on it, and so it's it's not going to be a road that we get a lot of traffic that's um, not by the contractors or folks who own um, these lots. We, we don't expect a lot of through traffic. Uh, again, there'll be a gate on it, and so we, we don't expect to get much, much traffic other than um, people who are utilizing the lots for their use. Um, on to the next slide. Here's a slide of our proposed path. Tim did a good job of showing it. I, I, I wanted to just clarify. We talked about reflectors being the, the separating mechanism from the, the 26 foot of road and then the four foot of um, additional roadway. We're actually proposing a rumble strip. We think that would be the most effective way. Um, we would paint that with reflective paint. So it would act as a reflective um, uh, delineated uh, uh, physical barrier between Albeit just a rumble strip, but a, a barrier where where our traffic, if if somebody's you know doesn't recognize that there's a a, a path there, they would be immediately notified. It's we see the highway part department using these all over the place. They use them on really high speed roads. Um, we're this is going to be a low speed road, and so we think it's a really good uh, effective uh, use. We we compare it versus what what the required um, trail and boulevard would be. Um, Tim to the next slide. Here, here are two examples of paths in the area. Um, one is a gravel, one's a um, paved path, five foot, separated by a boulevard, and, and one is a concrete sidewalk um, with that same seven foot boulevard. And you can see this is what happens to trails when they don't get used, um, and and they just kind of start going back to start. They, they if you're not using them, they 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 have a tendency to start going back to to the land. And so here's some examples of of unsightly trails. So I could show you that you know how bad it would be to <laughs> to have these type of trails. Um, we think there's a lot of good reasons to to have the extended sidewalk on uh, as part of our roadway. We 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 disagree that snow removal is a, is ideal for the boulevard. Um, putting snow into that boulevard is has the potential to create a, you know, when when the winter is there, you throw the snow in there, it melts and, and freezes again, and it can it can damage that sidewalk. We we do see that in areas. We think it'll be better for maintenance if we have it all as one big, um, one large, our roadway being all attached. We feel like we can maintain it better. It'll it it won't go into this level of um, it won't look like this because we'll be clearing the sides of the roads. Um, we we don't like uh, having to cross our driveways. So we have seven lots on the east side of our property, and all of those lots are going to have a driveway. All of those driveways are going to cut through the the trail. We think it's much 
cleaner, neater, and easier for maintenance to have it all as one part of a road. Uh, Tim, I've just got a couple examples here of this is in St. Regis. This is a they use candlesticks is what they refer to as those reflective cones. Um, it's it's very similar. They use concrete attached to the road here. This is on the highway, Highway 135. Um, traffic at this point is going 40 miles per hour. So it, it it's something that MDT has approved in certain locations. Um, and then the next photo is of Clements. This is um, as you go south towards the school. They've since put cones along um, these candlestick cones along this 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 area. Um, but I used to live out here. It's it's a heavily used trail. Kids use it. This is there's a daycare right here. They're all heading to the school on it. Um, the traffic speed here is 35. Um, you, you commissioners may have heard of incidents um, where where there's been conflict out there. I haven't experienced any or seen any or, or heard of any. Um, I, I think it's an acceptable alternative is to have a connected roadway to the sidewalk. Um, and we we see it in it's it's not unique to us. It's something that we see in areas we think it's cost effective and and um, just good for for our program on this project. With that, I'll I'll. Um, make myself available for questions and comments. Matt was going to get up and say a little bit about the um, just about his experience on the site and his professional experience as a concrete guy. So where do, where does snow removal go then uh, with with your proposed? We would just push it off the we would, just off of everything. Yeah, off of everything. They're two acre lots. We we, we think there's plenty of room. Um, push it. If, if anything, it could go on lot eight. I mean, if we needed to, there's room over on that side. Um, but we would just push it off. We don't think it's ideal. One, you'll have to plow the road, then somebody will have to come in on the sidewalk and run a different piece of equipment. Um, so we, we don't think it's ideal. Matt, were you? Hello. Any questions to start with or I'll, okay. Go for it. Yeah, well, and I guess the, just a little bit of the background is when we bought this, it was, for me to have a spot to move and Would put our introducing yourself just so we call oh sorry, sorry matt wetzel my owner um when i bought this it was with the idea that i had a place for my construction business parker trailers equipment and so on and so forth and we needed a couple three acres and in 06 and so on and so forth the economy was just like now and you couldn't find two acres so we ended up with this went to to uh, level a spot off and uh, knife river was uh, had the chance and the opportunity and so we decided to expand on that just because they were there and doing and then it kind of come well maybe we better get everybody else involved because they had other contractors i worked with wanted a place to park and then they saw what i had going so that's what started this ball rolling never intended to be a developer so here we are <laughs> and uh, um but uh i think the the uh the sidewalk thing that we've been talking about mainly what i'm looking at there is just lack of maintenance by being able to plow the snow completely off not have a double set of culverts on every driveway going into the, the east side lots because we still need a drainage swale outside of the sidewalk the whole drainage for all the lots comes to that roadway flows south into the water collection so it would you know create another set of cul-de-sac or uh, uh, drainage structures and in between those two if we fill that thing full of water which the roadway is going to drain and then whatever we plow snow I'm a little bit leery we're going to end up with sidewalks laid out on expressway with the clay and the heaving and so on and so forth keeping my utilities outside of that area as well then they're accessible to the lots without digging through the sidewalk so that's the gist of that structure so thank you okay thanks tim could you bring up the map again with the picture of the road and the lots and all that do we have do we have a picture with the land use element superimposed maybe that's it um, I guess I should have said it differently that where the where the their private road is and then where the lots are all broken up. The first slide, maybe. Top 
10th. <laughs> there you go. Thank you. So we're, I just want to make sure I have understanding. So let me know. So this is a private road and it's, it's a, it's a dead end. Okay. So no one's going to be walking through this to get to anywhere else. At the moment, I would say no. So does it look like there's the potential for this to become a through street to somewhere else? Certainly not to the south. I think that would not be encouraged. So I'm, I was mixed up on my directions. I thought uh, so. South would Yeah, roller coaster. Okay, not to so so where the cul-de-sac ends is where the cul-de-sac is going to end. Yeah, that's the southern end. All right. So, all right. Do you want to look at land use element? Y yeah. So maybe I'm confusing growth policy with land use element. Can you just show us? What planning boards? Planning board was concerned that it wasn't matching the growth policy, but it does match our land use element. Is that? Yeah, the, and the land use element is actually adopted under the umbrella of our growth policy, so it's part of our growth policy. It is the the um, document that um, speaks to land use and density. And in, in the land use element, the idea was residential, but you said the planning board also recognized a need for a light industrial too. Yeah, I mean, in this case, we had to sort through this lack of growth policy compliance. And I think in this case, we concluded that we have um, an industrial zone location and it's been zoned for some time as industrial. Though this gen this is like 200 something acres in what you see in in yellow south of the railroad tracks, um, because there were no other big issues, we couldn't feel like we could use growth policy in such a way as to be certainly not regulatory. Sure. Yep. Sure. So I I just have to say, if um, speaking me personally now, if if this looked like this cul-de-sac was going to connect up with something else. And that something else would be built out when the land use element became zoning and we were talking about a residential area. I would be moved to uh, look towards a traditional sidewalk, imagining people would be walking through this space to get maybe from one neighborhood to the next. But the fact that it's a dead end road and isn't going to be any more than that and that it's a private road, uh, I, I could certainly live without the sidewalk. That's just That's just me. Yeah, because they right. It, we have the hay fields to the south and the Lavelle Creek, and it pinches off with the drainages. So, I mean, is this really upsetting to staff? If no, it we try to be consistent just in application of the regulations. But if as long as you have a rationale, commissioners, you can absolutely you and, can come up with an alternative. Yeah, and I totally appreciate the. Lean towards consistency and, and fairness, and we also need to be cognizant of the different contexts within which these proposals exist. And if it looks as if this cul-de-sac is going to end there and never be anything but that, it will always be just a dead end, then <clears throat> I, I don't see the need for a sidewalk as if it was going to be connecting one space to another space. I don't like excessive maintenance. so. Uh, I, I agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> or unnecessary maintenance. Yeah. I don't want. I don't want to create unnecessary maintenance. And and yeah, if this was in the middle of two residential areas, I would want the sidewalk. Commissioners, I have alternative language. Hey, way to go, Jim! Yeah. If you want to swap out a condition, <laughs> we did not plant this. This is, this is happening all on. We did not job. scheme this. <laughs> I assure you. Um, and what we would end up doing is deleting existing condition nine and what I would recommend it as, as an alternative would be the following language. Plans for an installation of a four foot wide asphalt pathway along Grand M Way shall be reviewed and approved by County Public Works prior to final plat approval. I feel like I'm waiting for the punchline. And I think that's it. I had some language about the reflectors, but as Paul described it, I think we can add that as a finding that enhances the record and it'll be clear what's required to install. 
Yeah, and I mean, I don't know how this fits in, but I could, I don't think the candlesticks would be necessary, and they are up now on on uh, Clements. And some neighbors came to us and said, "Cars are driving fast, kids are walking to school. We don't we don't like how it is now." And we went with the candlesticks, and they are they feel much better about that in in that in that space. Uh, in this space, though, nobody's walking to school, so I think I think the rumble strips would probably be just fine. So do we have three different motions here, or how do we do this? One at a time? Yeah, I would recommend taking them one at a time. And of course, you're going to want to swap, um, deny, you're going to want to plug approval in for the walkway variants. I feel like you got the heavy okay, lift here. I'm going to take a shot at this. So I'm going to motion that the variance request from Missoula County Subdivision Regulation Sections 3.4.7.3 require installation of curb and gutter along Grand Am Way be approved based on the findings of fact in the staff report. All right, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Now, number two, what's the language you want me to use? Juanita, I would just plug oh. in approved on that third line. Am I not looking at? Oh, I'm looking at the wrong thing. OK. Yeah, variance number two. Sorry. Um, Motion that the variance request from Missoula County Subdivision Regulations Table 3494 requiring installation of, should I say, four foot? No, so you're asking, you're basically um, allowing them to vary for, from the standard. So the only word that you have to change is denied. the denied and make that approved. And then they don't have to adhere to that standard. Yeah. And since we change, where am I? Turn that to approve. Oh, right. I couldn't Everything find, I couldn't find the word. Okay. Requiring installation of a five foot pedestrian walkways with seven foot wide. Boulevards along Grand Am Way be approved based on the findings of fact in the staff report and subject to the required condition of approval. Great. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And three, that the Pontiac Commercial Development Subdivision be approved based on the findings of fact and subject to the recommended conditions of approval. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I think we're done now. Great. Right. Thanks, everybody. Sorry for the wait. Oh, do you need to say something? Oh, okay. Good. Okay. Paul, I just, for the record, you and I agreed once. <laughs> and the sun's still in the sky. The world doesn't stop spinning. <laughs> Everything's all right. <laughs> okay, we're adjourned. I believe we are adjourned. Thank you.